Nobody really knows anything. Uh, greetings in the name of the Most High. And, you know, this is this is kind of, in, in a sense, um, nobody knows anything. Is is It's really a... Uh, and yet people are all looking for someone that knows something. Knowledge being that thing that can maybe make your life go easier, make things understandable, make things clearer... But even that has its limitations, as, as, as I've found out from trying to, you know, trying to save the world <laughs> and um, realizing my own limitations and being able to uh, express and explain these concepts. You know, the, the, the problem is, is that I don't think that people really understand the, I think we've gotten away from, you know, education about philosophy, I don't know, some people think, well, it's like a dry, boring subject in college. But uh, not really, because there, you know, a lot of philosophy deals with the subject matter of what, what plagues man the most, which is what is being, what is existence, why is existence, what, you know, and then we, from there we get to cosmology, and from there we get to theology, and um, <clears throat> the various, uh, for example, in um, the Gnostic uh, sects, they have, you know, ob obviously there's the problem of evil and the problem of the world. So how do we explain that in philosophical terms and then make that theological, i.e., into, into, you know, to, to worshiping creator? And then in the Gnostic, I mean, all, everything that was created is evil, you know, the, this world system, you know, is evil as a way to explain it. And then, and you have to get out and beyond all this, you know, and, and, and it, it, I guess God is more the distant. And if you're really an expert in Gnosticism, I used to be quite quite well versed in it, but it's just been so many years. I look at that as a, as a something that Christians might look into <clears throat> to explain the problem of evil. And that's why I bring it up. I'm not bringing it up to go through Gnostic theology and philosophy and the uh, a lot of Gnostics tend to go with the um, the Gnostic Gospels, which would be the the, the Nag Hammadi or the uh, so I guess it would be like the Nag Hammadi Gospels that uh, were discovered, i.e., the Dead Sea Scrolls, etc., uh, where you have different Gospels and different ways and orientations. You have people that were the Gnostics. You have the uh, Essenes. You have these various all these various groups and cults and and so forth. Really. In my view, just you know, having perused them them all and you know and and, and studied them in the way back, they're all um, unsatisfactory to me. I must say that I'm no fan of Gnosticism, uh, or uh, you know um, the uh, <clears throat> or the Nag Hammadi Gospels, or, or I'm no fan of any of it. And I'll tell you why, because it does not. It did not, I should say it did not, because this is going back. It did not make it okay for me to live. It did not explain uh, targeting, targeted harassment and things like that. It did not explain uh, how you're, you know, it did not explain the depth of evil. It did not make it okay for me to live. Not one Gnostic gospel, or if you like the... Nag Hammadi Gospels discovered um, and uh, adopted by many New Age groups in the New Age, New Age today. Uh, Gnosticism is unacceptable. Um, Christianity is taught uh, by super fundamental, whatever, you know, believe what's here, you know, it, it, the sort of top-down, you-tell-me-what-to-think type of Christianity is not acceptable. Um, obviously, real, you know, religions, you know, uh, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, all these are not acceptable, any of them, to me. Or Eastern Buddhism, Hinduism, all that, not, not even close to being acceptable because some of the hardest times I've gone through in terms of having a crisis within have been uh, when I was absorbed in Eastern philosophy and texts, especially um, in um, in the ancient Vedas 
and Hinduism looking for a way to live. So, so far, nothing and no religion and no Bible, no nothing, no, no written text anywhere has made it okay for me, it has, has made it all right. The, the many Psalms and, and Proverbs and things kind of comfort the heart temporarily. Uh, some of the explanations about why things are have been very sketchy and therefore not acceptable. I want answers. And I have not found them in any religion. I have only found answers, which are not intellectual answers, but I mean a way to live in, in, the, in the Holy Spirit via Jesus Christ. But this is kind of almost a blasphemy because the Jesus that I know or the, the, the Godhead, the creator you know, that I understand, that I know, is um, not really explainable to other people. I look at people going about their business of revivals and, you know, real simple kind of Jesus did this and Jesus did that and this sort of orthodoxy and I, I feel pain and I want to cry because it doesn't include me. Say, well, I'm not, I know I'm talking to the hardcore out there today. I'm talking to you hardcore people that are just not going to accept some pat answer someone gives you and you go, oh, okay. It's like I was watching this thing. They did this parody at the Comedy Central on, you know, well, we don't know who to vote for because the celebrities haven't told us yet. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know what to think about it because no one else has talked about it yet. I don't know what to think about it because no one else has told me how to think. No one else has told me what to say. No one else has, you know, handled me like a puppet today. So I don't know what to think. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, I don't know. And then when life gets to be like that, it becomes ennui, and, of course, it is you might as well be dead because there's no point. It's just breathing and perspiring and meandering. And and to me, that's unacceptable. I used to read and read and read theology, Bible, concordance, trying to line things up and, you know, come up with a, a way to explain it, a way to kind of get into a word study, into something that could be satisfactory food so that we could live. No. You see, nothing and no one searched all the radio stations. You know, they're all Orthodox priests, right? There are priests today, all the radio talk talkers. You know, they handle the news, they handle this, they handle that. They handle reality. <clears throat> they tell us how to live, what to think, whatever. But they've all fallen short, and they all are steeped in ignorance, every last one of them. I'll include myself in that list because I haven't been able to satisfactorily get to that point where I can just breathe the air. And, and, and right, right now, I'm going to throw the gauntlet down. I'm not going to accept what has been doled out as reality, what has been thrown on me to accept as reality. I, I know some things work, like the power of prayer, I know it works. The, the, being led by the Lord, I know that works. The Bible, as far as I'm concerned, works for me, but it's been, you know, about a lot of people that seem to have words and ex- expressions about it. I don't know, you know, where they're coming from, but it, it, it never really, really rises to the level of it's okay to live now. It's like partial, okay, like a little comfort, you know, a little, uh, maybe I can get one more step down the road, but in general, I'm not really feeling too well. Well, that's because of you. You're being rebellious. You're, you're being prideful. You're not letting the word into your heart. Oh, yes, I am. Who are you to say that to me? You're nothing. Less than nothing. Do your own walk. See how see how it really is. See right when you stop 
listening to other people and living through their reality. See if you can live through your own. I think you would agree with me. It's, it's just unacceptable. Okay, why is it unacceptable? Because the problem of evil in the world and suffering in the world makes it so that even if we're doing okay for a, a you know, split second, the other guy is not. And, and everything is steeped in unfairness. And at some point, you have to, and you know, I know people, they, they get mad at God and they yell at God and they, then they repent and say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. No, you should have done that. Why not? Why not ask the question, why is it so unfair day after day and, and it just continues like that? So the people that have a, um, the people that have this continual sorrow because the world is suffering. So they can't, they, they have to suffer because the world is suffering. So there's not going to be any day for them that they can say hallelujah, whatever, because, you know, until and unless the situation is dealt with, uh, there's not going to be any, um, no real celebration of life or anything else because the world is suffering. As long as people are suffering out there, it's not really how, you know, you can live in a little bubble and temporarily celebrate, I suppose. But in general, you're still going to be cognizant of that world that is suffering. Now, the problem of suffering and evil, like I say, I have not been able to find anything that goes to the depth of the multi-layered, multi-dimensional, multi-tiered um, thing of spiritual warfare, stalking, gang stalking, uh, directed energy weapons, and and the rest of it, and just the general, you know, World War Three between all people. We have war between all people. We have no peace. There is no peace. There's fake peace. There's temporary peace. There's like, okay, uh, I won't kill you, you don't kill me, and you know, we'll get along for a couple days, but then it kind of devolves into uh, you know, another problem later on. No, no permanent peace. There's no peace at all. And uh, I see people struggling with this problem of, uh, you know, you got to realize every single person here is, uh, you know, and, and I, I want to get away from some of the lingo about the targeting. Every single person here on earth, uh, from the day you're born to the day you die, it's all, you're, it's not like you're not known in every, in, in every dimension, every possible situation. So you are, um, you know, nobody gets away. The, the, the population itself is tricking itself because it's, it's, it's living in a delusion, a fool, a fool's delusion in, in the sense that they think, well, <clears throat> you know, some may understand the bullying where a person is singled out, you know, to be a scapegoat. And then, you know, people say think pretty soon they're on 1500 lists and it seems like there's 50,000 people down on, you know, coming down on that one person to just watch them go psychotic and kill themselves. And, of course, take what they have. Um, these people would be considered the civilization of hell or the normal citizen of the world. Because they don't think it'll ever it'll really include them. And they're okay with temporary pleasures. And they like to watch when someone's, you know, getting... Uh, Getting that tar they know because they know they're, they belong to the devil. They know they're in that dimension. And there are billions of them. People that should never have been born in the first place. But there they are running things. They are completely ignorant of this whole system that's going on. Of tracking, of bullying, of harming, of finding the weaker one. And how these people pile on and act like they're not. Thinking that they're not going to go to hell. They're going to hell. Because they're trapped in a, in a reincarnational, consistent hell that they can't get out of. And then they act like there's no such thing. And if anyone describes it, then, then in come the shrinks and whatever to, to, to discredit them and call them crazy. Um, 
There's no church that I know of that will deal with this situation. Other than maybe there's some that tend to put together an orthodoxy or they try to they try to blend it into, well, this is every man's thing. It, it, it is an every man thing, but people have to realize it's an every man thing that is not spoken of. Therefore, there is a problem. The problem is that the world gives consent to the stalking and torturing of innocent people that mean no harm. And there's no redress, no justice, and no peace. And like I say, the the problem with, you know, saying, well, it, okay, there's the... No, bear with me here. We're going to go to a good place, I, I assure you. I will not leave you with the drink. We have to just put our cards on the table, though, you know, and be honest about how... I'm hearing about people every day. You know, what's prompting this is that I'm, you know, there's a lot of people losing their lives, okay? They just can't take the torture anymore. They just can't take it anymore. They just can't take it anymore. So you wonder, well, is there something I could have said? Is there anything I could have done out of the Bible? Could I have given comfort uh, and, 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 and ministered? No, you could not have. Well, then what do we do? Well, you don't go into avoidance and denial. You say what it is. Seems that no matter how much I pray, that the victim, the list of victims keeps growing. So what gives with that person just evil and they just deserve to be bullied, stalked, put into a complete torturous situation, then expired? Was that, is that is that no cause and effect? Not reaping what you sow, but just destruction of innocence, I suppose. Is that acceptable to God? Now, I've tried really hard to go back to the original sin and say, you see, we've all inherited, you know what I mean? And therefore, that's what we're surrounded with, things like that. I've been all through Job Read a lot of commentary about Job, too, in my, in my brief, too brief life. I read a lot of commentary about the book of Job, really about how bad things happen to good people, and why that is. I've seen how some people just get cut down even if they are really truly believing in Jesus Christ for help. But I've also seen even more tragedy with people who say, well, then screw God. And, uh, you know, it just sucks and that's it. And I've I've seen a worse hell for them. (laughs) Begging the question, did we we do something? Did we do something wrong? Wrong. Because even if right now I'm okay because I'm talking to you on the mic and then I'm going to go, I have to do writing today and, and every day at this point. And, and so things are kind of busy and I'm not able to really you know fo- focus on social media that much. But um, I can tell you this, there is no relief in social media Facebook will make it worse because Facebook turns people against each other. Remember, that's the purpose of it. Keep everyone separated and, and, and controlled. You can fight against it, but, you know, and I know people, uh, many people who would have no human contact if it were not for Facebook. So it's this kind of double-edged sword and people are trying their best to use it and be social, but it, it, it tends to, like I say, turn people against each other through its algorithms and uh, 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 social engineering 
uh, concepts that it has put into place, and, and especially hypnosis. Most people, I'd say 90% of the people on earth are hypnotized, right? They're programmed to do what they're going to do. There might be about 10% of people who, are, who can't be hypnotized because they were abused. Therefore, they don't trust man. Therefore, they can't be hypnotized. Hello, <laughs> yeah, my hand's raised. That I'm one of those. Uh, cannot be hypnotized. Um, and people get mad. They say, you, you, know, you rebel against anything. And it's like, well, anything that is control, it doesn't matter what it is, where it's coming from. I'll break the stall down. I'll bust it all up. It, it doesn't go good. Oh, so many opportunities, could have, but, but you can't cooperate. So therefore, you're not going to be able to get anywhere. And the answer is fine. I don't want to get anywhere. Anywhere in this situation is nowhere to me. <laughs> okay. So, and what's prompting this is, like I say, so many, so many testimonies as I've, you know, conducted my research, I really can't take it anymore. I've seen enough to, you know, I've been really researching the military lately and, uh, looking through military uh, magazines and manuals about uh, laser weapons and things like that, since I've known people that have worked on those. And, uh, yeah, you're probably uh, upset. I hope you're upset with yourselves for having worked on those things. And, you know, yeah, you can, you know, they have, did you know, you can go out and buy lasers and EMF, things that can be EMF, you know, directed weapons, uh, with with just pocket change. You can use it on your fellow man. Certainly something like a laser. Uh, then there's, you know, infrared, uh, which is a, which is, can be used as a weapon to, uh, you know, deals with microwaves. Uh, the average person if they wanted to, could actually engage in mind-controlling other people through electronics if they so chose. It's that affordable, and, and, and the technology is clear. I mean, you'd have to, you know, do whatever you could do to build it or whatever. And I, I know there are people that are building all kinds of protection against uh, scalar, magnetic, um, radio, microwave waves. But this idea that some of these people are being tortured with this stuff, it's just, it, it, it just absolutely, it's unwatchable to me. It's, it's, it's just unwatchable. I, it, it, it's just so, it's so evil that you, there just is, aren't any words to describe. And when you see the people that are, that are being harassed, and you see that there's a growing number to where all these people have the similar story, so what the evil world is doing, and, and, and also I postulate the world is evil. There's no 80-20, there's, it's just evil, period. Uh, I tried for many years to see it as a blend, a combo, 80% evil, but there's this 20% good or whatever, there, there's a remnant. But the amount of atrocities allowed to continue without, and one thing that's prompted this, this talk, folks is that I know a lot of you feel the way that I the, the opening of the of the talk today you feel and it's funny I played a real light song in the beginning you know what I mean my rendition of the lonely bull which is just kind of putting it to synthesizer and uh and and, and you know that's kind of a happy da, 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 you know what I mean and uh and then I that I've in this dark period but it's but there's a purpose to it what I'm grappling with, let me, let me go to my motivation then. What's, what's motivating me here in this uh, last segment is seeing the atrocities done to, to mankind and realizing there's not a damn thing I can do about it. And also that it's gotten a lot worse because I've seen the, 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 the amounts of people that have gone to these uh, you know TI conferences and things like that and are trying to get redress against the government for allowing these things. And what you have to understand, it's like a kind of a Pandora's box. The genie's out of the bottle. It's insane. It's rent. Nobody can control it. You see what I mean? So there's no real redress. I mean, hopefully somebody will win a court case somewhere, but that will uh, affect the collective. But right now it's a growing number of people. And what's happening, instead of, you know, 
this many people can't be wrong, which is the, you know, this is, this is the thing. This many people can't be wrong. And I have to understand, this whole thing with the, they're soon to roll out the alien thing. So that's, that's coming. That's all connected. You know, it's all, it's all interconnected to the military industrial complex, the alien thing, uh, the, the whole all seeing eye occult tracking. And if you had heard my story, the story with Bishop Kanko, I had him on so many years ago, but how he talked about these multidimensional computers in Satan's that are used to track each person. Now, this was way before D-Wave computers, way before any of man's technology catches up, because it, it, all of that technology was given by the fallen angels, you know, it was given to man, according to the Book of Enoch, you know, and it is akin to witchcraft that is, Ill, it's electronic witchcraft, in a sense. Witches will do things to have a spell and, and get able to create a frequency that actually kills people, you know. They, they, they do these rituals that, uh, death rituals, they've been doing them on Trump every day. I found myself praying in the middle of the night, I was praying in Jesus' name, uh, and I've proven that that name is, is above all of the names, but then when I go to find out, you know, Lord, please tell me why there's this situation, um, the, it's, it's, uh, it's almost like, well, you're here, you're going to go through it, and there's no explanation. <laughs> it's just, you know, I mean, there's no, there's no explanation. I just know that, okay, that I will just be patient, ultimately, and wait on the Lord. I mean, I know that's not a satisfactory answer, when there, but, but going it alone, I can't do that at this point because I've had too many miracles in my life. I've had too many fulfilled words where I got a word from the Lord and it fulfilled. I mean, you're talking like thousands and thousands of fulfilled words and miracles in my life. So I have to say, okay, but then I have to go, Lord, why, how can we keep putting up with all this? And I did get one answer a while back, and this will make you feel better. That a lot of what you see isn't really going on. It looks like it's going on, but it's not. It's not a simulation of reality. There, that would assume there's a reality somewhere. That's not, uh, that's not, it's not a projection of a computer, uh, a multidimensional computer in another dimension or something like that. And it's creating this dream state that we're occupying at the moment, but we're really eternal beings. Uh, you know, it, it may be similar to that, but that's, it's not something that it's, it, that's man-oriented, I should say, and that, that'll solve the whole thing. It's not coming from a place of man at all. Man, if anything, reflects some of that in his own technology, but his own technology pales in comparison to what is, uh, including CERN and D-Wave computers and, and you know, it, it, you know and, and all the uh, shenanigans of the military-industrial complex and their connection to the uh, fallen angels, the watchers, the UFOs, and all the rest of it. But, of course, the military-industrial complex has a, help, has a big appetite for advanced technology, and, you know, and, and, you know, they're just about to reveal things. They're starting to reveal, like, there's mining going on on the dark side, you know, the other side of the moon. There are structures, there's miners, there's, there's you know, they're starting to kind of bring in this, uh, this whole sort of theology about aliens, which I know people are going to worship them. I mean, you know, it's like a no-brainer. They're going to worship them. Because they want a savior, you see, folks. Jesus, and I, I don't want to discourage anyone, but Jesus has failed the world. You know, in the sense that Jesus has been pretty much rejected, as it, even the Bible says this, uh, and would be rejected, you know, relegating Jesus to maybe a small remnant. But they're going to look for the alien to be the savior. They're always looking for a savior, whether it's Oprah Winfrey or Obama. I remember how that, that, that whole thing that's going on that's just, you know, witch queen one and witch queen two, right? <laughs> just a blasphemy. It's just, it's, who cares? Obama can't help me. You know, and, and Trump is not my savior. I mean, you know, none of these people can help any. I, it's amazing I'm even here right now. I mean, if I was relying on anyone outside myself or the, you know, the various people that have told me what, what's going on, what I have to do to be, I don't even want to be happy. I just want to exist, you know, without, you know, being in this hold position where I'm kind of trying to get through that next few minutes type of thing. I, I you know, it's, it's, 
Uh, and then, of course, you know, having, you know, in my own life, having my beloved daughter, you know, take her own life, she couldn't take it anymore. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's almost like the Lord is just, it's just you know, it, it's, I, I start wondering, well, what, you know, what's the purpose if someone is, is you know, being beam stalked, which there's beam stalking, you know, like, and it's not Jack and the Bean stock, it's beam stalking. And, you know, so they're just, like, people running around trying to escape being fried, you know? I mean, it, it's, it's the epitome of hell. The, epi- the literal ep- ep- epitome of, uh, of hell. The fire brimstone is really, is really the, uh, you know, is, is really the, uh, the, the use of electromagnetism to torture people. That's the flames. That's the lake of fire. And, see... It wouldn't be so bad. I mean, and, then, and I asked these questions back then, you know. It's like, you know, back when uh, the Kennedys were killed and then, uh, you know, Martin Luther King. And just about anything anything that was, you know, part of the world at that time or the, the world coming out of the Leave it to Beaver sort of hypnotized Alice in Wonderland consciousness, you know, the, 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 all, the, all this stuff coming out of, you know, the 50s, and then Eisenhower with that big warning, also Kennedy with a big warning, and then all these people wiped out, and then, you know, these ruthless people going on like jackals, that they're going to have this, this, this one-world, you know, top-down, uh, oligarchical, uh, you know, uh, a robotoid, uh, subhuman kind of existence for us to live in, and, you know, i.e. hell, right? I.e. because... Because nobody gets ahead in Satan's world without hurting somebody else to get ahead. See, it's all based on hurting other people, which we don't want to do. We don't want to hurt anybody. So therefore, we're losers because we don't want to hurt anybody. We're talking systemic here. The, the, the kind of thrill I've had is I've survived to this point, so therefore, you know, um, that drives them nuts. They need to be reminded that these are, you know, they are following the hounds of hell into hell. They, they need to be reminded that most of them are past the point of no return. You know, and, and this is where some comfort comes in. They're past the point of no return. Whatever made them them, their soul had been scalped, and now they're part of the hive, okay? Once you're part of the hive, you're done. You ain't, there's no redemption if you're not there to be redeemed. If there's nobody home... Who's there to be, there's no one there to be redeemed. So Jesus did not make a mistake. So there isn't really a problem. The problem is that we take it, we take it literally when, and and the Lord is showing me here and there how it is a, not a simulation, but it is not real. It's almost like going through some sort of test and then you come out the other side and you know, it's not, you know, you, it, was, it was all about of, who knows, a test of loyalty, whatever. Uh, I will say to the Lord and anybody else, the Christian religion on earth is, is pretty much an abomination. Uh, the following of Christ and the relationship with Jesus and the Father is not an abomination. But there's a distinction... It goes because any time you get two people together or more, there's always going to be a satanic person to infiltrate and ruin it. I don't know why that is, but they just they have the earth co- they got it covered. Um, with the stalking situation, people you know start could start with someone you know and and something in in a person. Uh, some motivation to get something the guy has or, you know, to discredit somebody, to, you know, to all kinds of, you know, human motives to, to start using harassment and things. But then, see, once, see, once it, it becomes known that there's a targeted person, it doesn't matter about the initial motivation of the few people around that so-called target. It spreads to be thousands and even millions to where they uh, can get you on their radar. And, you know, it doesn't matter where you fly, where you go, there they are. 
waiting for you. Already, you know, briefed and ready to go. Knowing things that they could not know about you to scare you, to break you down, to, to, to rob you of sleep, to do whatever, to bring you to the brink. And then do they care that you might get some help? Of course, they'd love you to go to a shrink it into the mental hospital. That's going to be the new big thing. They're going to have to build tons of them. All because you could not become one of Satan's Therefore, you're on the list. You may be totally evil yourself, but you can't, you, you, there's no there there. You cannot become a commodity of Satan and because you just aren't. And uh, you're not going to be. And you're not going to be one of them. And it's not like you can flip allegiance and then go to the dark side and say, okay, I'm with you guys now. There is no, you, there's, in the end, it's all an illusion anyway. There are no, there, there, there is no organized anything. It's just, it, it's just horrible, horrible multidimensional spiritual warfare, ultimately, against principalities of wickedness in high places, against a people that, that feel that they want to rule the world by, embracing every abomination there is and having those come to the surface of the earth. It is about creating a literal hell on earth. And they can't do that unless they have innocent victims to torture and to harass, and that's, that's where you come in. You provide them with power. That's, they get the power to, to continue this situation. And this situation has to be brought to an end. There will be no... Um, need for trial and uh, tribunals and everything. It just has to be ended. It just has to be brought to a conclusion because there is no future here. There is no... Uh, the, the only conclusion there can be is that, uh, you know, the, the Bible says the Lord returns the rules with a rod of iron. Well, that would be the end of this, this situation. That would be what I'm talking about. That's the end of this situation. Well, I don't know. There will be a new one. Uh, the Bible says there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Exactly. It's describing it, this whole dimension has to be wiped out, gone. There's no saving it. There has to be a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem. Uh, you know, I make all things new is another code name for Jesus. I make all things new. We have to be a new create creation in Christ in order to emancipate. But, you know, for whatever reason, we got stuck here, right? And any reasonable person wants to find a way out. And all the things that are acceptable in the world only lead back to bondage and do not provide a way out. For example, you know, I've gone to millions, seems millions, but lots of Bible studies and things where you just don't get free. It just doesn't happen. And, you know, I've beat myself up and said, well, it's my fault. You know, it's my fault. Then now I realize it's not my fault. It's not there. There's no there there. It's not my fault. I diligently and earnestly have been, have been searching for a way to live, and, and it's not my fault. Most people don't even do that. They just sit around like, you know, they're completely programmed. They do what they're programmed to do, and then they die. They don't do anything. They just, you know, they, they don't even exist, really. They, it's like they come and go, and it could have just, who knows whether it was really real or not. But the Lord tells me a lot of that isn't real. A lot of the stalking isn't real. And a lot of it is, you know, the people aren't the people that you thought they were or that they don't really exist when you get away from them and you think about them and then the next day you see them again or you see them and they're not quite the same and it's completely interchangeable and, and totally mind-boggling and there's no help in solving it, confronting them, yelling at them, you know, or, or some people have taken up uh, weapons and, and just shot them all, all the ones they perceived were against them. And, of course, they were wrong, right? And it, it, they became, you know, a killer and, and put away. Evil against evil doesn't solve anything. 
there are people that are, you know, they put more cameras and more. See, to me, this is all spiritual warfare 101. This is all that the, it, it's just like being in the spiritual realm that is real, let's say. And this is the dream reality. And and fighting these, you know, demons, monsters, different things that are that are coming at you because they know you. Legion, right? Legion, they know you. They know you, they know you from forever. Now they say, how could they know me? Well, it's not from electronics. It's not from being on a list. It's way, way, way more uh, fluid than that. It just is the nature of things that, it, that the, you know, when you're a rancher, you know, you 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 know how many head of cattle you got, right? You know how many sheep you got. You know how many buffalo. You know how many you know longhorns you got. You know what you've got, right? And uh, similarly, anyone born here is tracked immediately. I mean, it's it's already known before they were even born, you know. And and there is a there is a fight at a higher level, but that just seems to be that people will learn to call on the Lord, and then that will thwart the the plans of the New World Order or whatever you want to call it. They, they, I mean, they're looking for a a complete new world order without anything to do with God whatsoever. But anyway, God still has to be the source, even though religions have, have failed me. They failed to bring me comfort. They have failed to provide uh, explanation. I've had philosophical discussions with many very, very brilliant people. None of that helped. I've had talks about the mechanics of how this works with many other people, each one with their own pet conclusions. None of that, what, what I had to say didn't work and what they had to say didn't work. It was unacceptable. Nobody knows anything. No one knows anything that can possibly bring more than a temporary, and I, I'm all for temporary comforts, but a temporary comfort until the next you know, horrible thing happens. Anyway, Jesus, the misunderstood. The kingdom of God is misunderstood. I mean, it's understood, but that no one wants to really understand it because, you know, the kingdom being within you, it's like, so what is the real reality? It's within you. Accessible within. Everything out this way, from your eyeballs going outwardly, it's this all the illusion. What's within is the is the real. People that come and go, like I say, they're like um, they're real, I guess, in their own context. But they're they, as far as your life is concerned, they come and go, and they can't. It's not really a. It's kind of a faulty reality. It's like you can't really rely on other people. You can rely on yourself, and you hope to cooperate with other people. I do because I like to collaborate with other people. So. I like to cooperate with other people, but, you know, it, it kind of comes and goes. Everything is very fluid. There's just nothing traditional anymore. Nothing that could just be there and satisfy the people. Like I say, religion is is not satisfactory to people. But religion no longer serves the needs of people upon the earth except for the, the basic needs of, you know, obviously, you know, tragedy, poverty, things like that. Uh, you know, churches... Religious organizations can can be very helpful, but in terms of 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 a reason to breathe, this is something that um, you know I, I don't think it was ever resolved over Western civilization. Certainly over Eastern, it 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 became ultimately in you know it brought into Zen. Zen Buddhism is the most modern manifestation, and the reason it was brought into Zen was to. To, to, to somehow be at peace with the with the absolute horror of existence. Existence is pure horror. So how can one it's not just how can one, you know, do the right thing and be nice and 
be helpful and be you know be a good person on earth it's 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 how can one breathe is more in the question how can one go on the next 5 minutes how can one exist and i've had i worry about some people that have told me that they're, they're going to see me you know when we're all dead and you know i immediately go into prayer for these people that they you know suicide is not an option and um, it is absolutely not an option. You know, I can't take it anymore. I committed suicide. I, well, I can understand and have compassion for that. It is a failure um, to understand this one thing. It's, it's The mistake made is it becomes a vanity. You know, your suicide becomes vanity. It doesn't, it doesn't produce anything of value. <clears throat> the... Suicide is like the final act of man that becomes value. Somehow it's valued. And what it does is it negates uh, the Spirit of God. It negates God. Uh, You are God. So any act of suicide, you are God. Or taking someone else's life, now you're God, right? So it's unacceptable. Well, a lot of these people, uh, you will see them, you know, obviously they, they, they pop up again. I, I, you know, many, many people, the, the very few that commit suicide that, that go through with it. But when they do, well, Godspeed on to the Lord. I, I, hope, I hope it all works out. I understand, you know, that, that, you know, sometimes there's mercy killings. You know, sometimes there's, you know, people are suffering so much, they just letting them go on another day. It's just, it's just inhumane. It's just, it, there's no future, there's no help, there's no no miracle healing, they're just going to be harassed and targeted and followed around and their lives ruined and have no options, becoming more and more shut-ins where they can't do anything. I mean, you know, maybe it's more humane to, and, and the Satanists are sucking off all that, you know, they, they're all Satanists, right, all the stalkers, right, they're all Satan's minions, you know that. Most are not even real, you know that. You figured that much out. So, by the same token, we need to be not considering ourselves as real, but really a fluid situation. God's children, that's who we are by default. We're God's children. We don't call upon religion, we call upon God. And when we pray over other people, I pray, I call upon God in Jesus' name to pray over them and and to help protect them. That's no guarantee because people do leave all the time, as I've seen, all, you know, too, too painfully seen. But that was a mistake. You see, those those people all made a mistake. You live on despite being, you know, you say you're tortured, your life is ruined, but you live on because of God, not you. So you put up with it as a service to God. Producing the sweetest fruit, obviously, because the people that are the most harassed and tortured are, you know, in their survival, are going to be the most pleasing unto the Lord. To be the Lord's real close children. That's the privilege of that. That's It's like Jesus. Uh, but to throw it away, you know, because you, you don't like it, and you can't handle it, or you can't you can't deal with it, it's totally unfair, therefore I'm going to kill myself, uh, completely unacceptable, because that's an act of vanity, and an act of antichrist, it's anti-God, right, anti-life, and uh, tends to negate all the good work that's gone in to the, sur- in other words, you, you survive, and that becomes a good work unto the Lord, and a, and a, and a sweet-smelling savor, if you will, under the Lord, because the Lord knows, and so you keep going because of that. You don't keep going because of you know you're you're happy, you're sad, you're in between, you're 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 stimulated. You have a future. There's nobody on earth, friends, that has a future here. Nobody. Nobody here has a past either. We just we believe in it because we're in a in a weird situation here with this present, past, and future business. But there is no future. There is no legacy. Ultimately, there there is no earth. 
you know. So there really is nothing to have to uh, spend your life trying to set up a legacy. This is just an act of vanity that is completely meaningless and, and will have no value going forward anyway. Rather, as Jesus says in Matthew 6, lay your treasures up in heaven that, uh, that, that you'll be rewarded in that way. You know, meaning, meaning, you know, just keep, you keep it all in perspective. There's no winning the game here. You can chase around perpetrators all you like. Of course, we put today's podcast kind of in the, I'm in the subject matter of, 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 uh, you know, I don't know that we should call it gang stalking. Do you? I mean, it's, it just seems like it's, much more uh, profound than, than some, some, that implies a gang on the street just stalking you, you know. That doesn't really uh, even sum it up. You're dealing with a, a fight in hell. You're dealing with a supernatural fight, an ultra-natural fight. You're talking with an omnipresent kind of, uh, you know, enveloping consciousness of, you know, in a, a closed cage match with evil. You're talking about... Uh, you know, something completely over-the-top unfair with nowhere to go for, for, for help. People have videotaped, you know, being followed and the same people pop up here and there and they pop up and they pop up and then there they are, you know, um, and they go up to them and say, why are you doing that to me? Why don't you mind your own business? And they go, I am, I'm not doing anything. You know, and, and it's always, it's a wall of the same response everywhere on earth. <laughs> they, they want you to try to fight them mano a mano. You can't. You're dealing with something that's way, way above our pay grade here. A reality. We are above our pay grade, understanding ourselves. Understanding the situation here is above our pay grade. It's just all of it. It's just we have a, we see through a glass and darkly. We see it partially, but we just don't see the big picture. And that's unfortunate. Okay. So in my research, I've been all over the internet. I've been all over, uh, you know, and I've looked at a lot of things. And right now I kind of have to, to stop for a while and really, really assimilate because the one thing I could say, that, that goes to this, this having to fight the rise of the psychiatrist, which is going to be a horrible thing, and which is growing in horror every minute, uh, is that the, the testimonies and the kind of perceptions of things going on seem to, uh, not quite, but almost have like a universal uh, value. You know, like a universal understanding of the evil that's happening. Uh, you know, almost to the point where you can, you know, and that, like I say, and that goes to the strength against the psychiatrist because that many people are not in some kind of a delusion or mentally ill. That many people who are agreeing with one another cannot be just written off as false and it's going to be hard for those shrinks to get in there and they're already infiltrating chat rooms. They're they're all over the place because this this topic is being discussed all over the place, and so these shrinks are going to come in and try to bust it up. They'll say, I've had them on the YouTube channel. Anybody that says, uh, anyone that, that is gang stock is, is, is mentally ill or whatever. And so they have all these trolls out there that are acting on behalf of the, of the, of the new psychiatric movement, which will be to round up people that are having these issues because... Uh, the evil would continue, right? The state becomes now the stalker. And, uh, you know, adjudicate them, have them under observation. The shrink, of course, is going to say, well, you know, they're completely delusional. They believe this is going on, and there's no evidence that there's, any, there's nothing like, there's no such thing. Okay, folks, bear this in mind. Right now, these the shrinks in our society, our society is saying, there's no such thing as gang stalking. There's no such thing as as organized targeted harassment or or uh, no such thing as the things these people are saying that they're being followed that there are people that have wrecked their reputation who have said bad things about them suddenly there's a thousand people on them suddenly there's two thousand people suddenly they go to a store and they're and they're looked at they're 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 given mean looks they go to a restaurant they're talking about being harassed for being a trump supporter 
How about just anywhere they go, they're, they're being harassed. And, and they can't go anywhere because it's always the same harassment by people who you wonder, well, where do you live? Well, where they live is they don't live where you live. They're not in your dimension. They're not human like you. You know, they're not like you and they're not existing in the same space as you are. They're informed already and pre-informed about your entering into that place of business or whatever. How is that possible? Uh, no, it's not being done electronically because they're connected to a certain t- network. Yes, but that network is not of this world. Right. Uh, just go up to them and tell them they're going to hell. You know, the, the, tell them, I hope you enjoy hell because that's that's all you're going to get. You know, they, they'll be you know recycled, spin cycled. You know what I mean? Over and over and over until, who knows, maybe they'll, I actually don't even want to speculate about that because I know when I'm gone, there is no such thing as any of this. And same thing with you. When you're gone, there is no such thing as any of this. When we're gone, there is no such thing as any of this. This is, it, it ceases to exist. So there's that to contend with as well, meaning it's some sort of game or some kind of trap we're in that we need help to get out of. By, and only God can get us out. So, though religions failed, the only reason I felt like, you know, breathing, you know, the next five minutes, and that's hard, how can I, how, how, where's the religion that can help me? Hey, where's the philosophy that can help me? Where's the person who can help me? They don't exist. There's never been a person that inspired me to go on another, well, maybe Trump did. He inspired me to fight on, because he just, uh, he, you know, after being beat up and beat up and beat up, he goes, hey, he goes out and plays golf or something. I mean, I'd be like, you know. Uh, so there, there is that. I see there's a growing number of people that hate Trump in the, uh, in, in the you know, conspiracy sort of, you know, thing. And, and uh, eh, I have no opinion. I mean, that's people are entitled to their own opinion. I, I just, uh, you know, I'm anti-communist myself. So that's what influences my decisions. Pro freedom, pro capitalism, pro you know. I, I'm not pro people being stalked. Well, you know, when we've showed up in places, it's much worse than that. I mean, we've showed up in places and, and gone the other way where we clear the room. We clear the room, not the other way around. We clear the room. I don't let them clear me out of the room. I'm like, you know, you stand there, you stare them down, and they're going to flee. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Resist the temptation to cower and run. Well, we've all cowered and run. It's nothing to be ashamed. You didn't know what it was. It was scaring the crap out of you. It was a new thing, and suddenly your entire reality was tainted by it. I know this happened to me when I was, you know... Uh, younger than as a teenager, that that was the really most devastating thing to see that all the friends I had were like wearing a mask and they're all just basically demons. Obviously, they've been, you know, given over to it. Once they're given over to it, they start hunting you. They're awful. Terrible, terrible people. They start hunting you just because they wound up on the other side of that line, right? So so the, what's their job? To hunt you. They have no other job, folks. They look for redemption. I know one right now, movie mogul kind of guy, looking for redemption, looking for uh, absolution, looking for salvation and finding it. He's trying to go to his friends and apologize for what he's done in the world. Actually, that's a good sign. Will he find it? Will he find that redemption? Well, you're not going to find it in, like I say, you're not going to find it in, in uh, get busy, busy activities. Uh, you're not going to find it in having some new goal on earth. You're not going to find it in churches or mosques or synagogues or uh, temples of any kind. It's going to have to be with you know from within the temple that's you, where God is that there is an answer as to, you know, there is peace there and perhaps nowhere else. 
I've, uh, like I said, there have been times I've been happy where I'll, I just need to be reminded of the news about how people are suffering. We, we will offer our prayers over to Pakistan. And, you know, it's really, things have really gone off the cliff here with that, uh, the fact that, you know, they were, they were going to let that woman off without being hanged. And then the people have been riding for three or four days. And, and uh, you know, our, our friends Violet and John are there and they, they're, they've taken some, some video of it and their lives are in danger. The kids' lives are in danger. So I would ask you for your constant prayer on, uh, for, you know, Lahore, Pakistan and other cities in Pakistan that have gone crazy. You know, and these, there's something wrong with the people. There's just something very wrong with them. And, um, you know, it's just, they're just, you know, they just want to put people to death. They just want to kill people at this point. So Violet and John and the kids in the orphanage are very, very, very much in danger. and They need help. I just pray a complete and total protection for Violet John and all the kids and all the Christians in Pakistan away from this Muslim invader, this Muslim enemy, and, and to deliver, deliver people from that, that scourge of horror. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, we got. To, this is a terrible, terrible thing. I pray thing. also that uh, President Trump will intervene, and Asia Bibi and her family can get out of there safely. Well, it'd be great if he could bring her here. Yeah. You know, get her out of harm's way. This is you're dealing with, you know, a primitive, barbaric people to begin with, and and uh, you know they're just not educated. They're not. Um, they, they don't. It's kind of amazing to me that Pakistan actually has nuclear weapons. Being that I, I, I'm just surprised they can even crack up at an engineering book. You know what I mean? At this point, with that kind of barbarism going on, it's uh, it's it reminds me almost of like Lawrence of Arabia, even though it's taking place in Pakistan and not in Saudi Arabia. But I remember what, what, what Lawrence goes, you know, you, you people are a little people, a silly people, greedy, barbarous, and cruel. That was a line of dialogue from David Lean's um, masterful epic, and uh, a little people. A greedy people, or a little people, oh, a silly people, a, a greedy, a little people, a silly people, greedy, barbarous, and cruel. And of course, they didn't like that when he said that. But that's the way the world perceives, you know, the Bedouin, the the, the Arabs, the, the the Muslims, and their uprisings and so forth. It just seems like complete, like you know, thirty-five point IQ tops, right? Uneducated. Uh, you know, unthinking, um, again, you know, barbarous, violent, stupid. Uh, this whole uprising that's going on now, where they burn their whole city down because this one woman wasn't put to death, and they're just screaming for her death. That makes them look absolutely retarded, like little more than animals. You know, they're like sick animals that have gone nuts. Mad dogs that need to be put down. I mean, they don't look like a credible society at all. Maybe there is. It's funny. Up in Pakistan, if and up in northern India, it used to be the uh, sort of the the the, the it used to be where the the the, the 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 Brahmin priests of Hinduism would keep you know the sacred texts and documents and things up in Srinagar, which is northern India, up in the Kashmir area, and uh, it was an intellectual powerhouse uh, up in that area and uh, it's funny how when you see these riots it just it just seems terrible now our folks you know they're they're beautiful loving smart you know they love the Lord and the Lord has given them this countenance of good and they want to spread this gospel because they want the gospel of peace to, to be able to heal their land Islam isn't going to do it Organized religion isn't going to do it at all. This kind of going out in twos and, and spreading the gospel and the fact that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and they just really, they understand one simple concept in, in more primitive areas than, than we have here. And that is you give yourself over to Jesus like a child and you're just like, Jesus is your friend. You know, he's like there with you. And, that relationship does help me to get through, you know, day to day and the rest of it. But the question of evil, it, it drives me nuts. The question of evil, you know, speaking to the Father, why would, it, you know, and the temptation, of course, to, to turn against in, in that, uh, in, in, you know, which is a mistake. 
um, grows where I don't understand the problem of evil. I don't understand why keep it. The people are already down. The people of Pakistan, they're poor. They're down. They're, again, not educated. Anyway. You know, Islam comes in and diseducates people. The fact that they've been overrun and conquered and tortured. I mean, if you, you're just beating, the, the, the horse is already in a coma. Why beat it anymore? You know, or like say, you can say the same thing about Jesus. He's already, you know, he's already been, you know, completely destroyed. Why beat him anymore? There's, he's not even aware that you're hitting him. And it's because they have to, they have to, they have to, because they can't stand living. They wish someone would put them out of their existence, but they're not. They're miserable people. They're taking their frustrations out on Jesus or whoever is in the way. They feel that's the only way that they can continue. And, you know, and, and, and they need violence. You know, they're just coming right out with They need to hurt somebody. All of which is, is designed to help get them through another day of life. So... My conclusion, once again, is there is, you know, and it just like, like a lot of you have concluded, I tend not to question God because I don't get, you know, that, that gets back to the Job thing. It's just, it's just, that's failing the test. It's just, okay, this is what we've got. Jesus is near. The Father is near through Jesus Christ. Uh, prayer works. Uh, we need to move forth. Uh, we're we're going to suffer in the wilderness a little while longer, and it's it's just that's the way it's going to be. We need to accept that and decide. Okay, are we going to commit suicide? Which it never is right because it's an act of arrogance against God. I mean, it becomes an act against God. I'm sure you don't want that on your record. You don't want that in. You know, if you're asked to, to suffer, it's because you're 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 you you you're, you're of a high calling, and and I can't think of anything more more suffering than, like I say, people that are being that seem to have no control over this this uh, being um, targeted, zapped, harassed, beamed, whatever. But like I say. The growing community of people. See, see, and all that fits into spiritual warfare. In other words, people that are of the Lord are persecuted. I mean, you, you know, I could look at the persecution in a more formal, you know, modern vernacular of gang stalking, but I could also look at it as uh, harassment, as Jesus told us we would have. To where you're not too sure where you can take your car, or where you go to that restaurant two days in a row, or where you can, you know, there's those dangers out there for every really true follower of Christ has the same danger out there, the same dangers out there, dangers from their family, dangers of being put on a list, dangers of gang stock again. That's all persecution. That's all the Lord has asked us to go through that suffering. And he's not going to give us an answer as to, you know, a philosophical answer, a satisfactory answer, rather, as to why it's there. We just have to, with blind faith, either decide to reject or affirm. But either way, that's what we've got. That's the only comfort we have. It's, it's, it's coming from outside of us. It's the Lord. And yet it's within us. Uh, despite the suffering to carry on, and that carrying on is the actual work, is the fruit of the work. Taking that next step, taking that next step is actually the fruit because you shouldn't be able to take the next step. But why are you? Because of the supernatural power of Jesus Christ. That becomes the testimony unto the Lord. That becomes the actual legacy and the purpose of your life. And then everything is cool. Got me? If you don't believe me, just keep on after it with your own understanding. Nobody can understand gang stalking. I have looked everywhere, and nobody knows, you know, ultimately, and I don't know. I mean, we, we have knowledge we can share, but <clears throat> it's never definitive, darn it. You know, it's not definitive. Just like it's not de definitive why existence. 
And you come up with all these theories, and everybody does, and I do too, and, and they're not acceptable. Ultimately, they fail. It just is a thing. And it is unfair. And it's terribly unfair, and there's a growing population of people growing every day. I'm, I'm just amazed how much it's grown in five years with a very similar testimonies. Ultimately, you know, it's going to be people that are for this one world, new world order thing, people that are for the mark of the beast and, and Satan, people who are worshiping the image of the beast versus those who don't. Those who don't will be the stalked. It's going to come right down to that. The, the growing number will include all believers. Absolutely. And we are all, we all protectorates because what's happened to us? God, almighty God in his hand has protected us since birth because the enemy knew who we were since birth. We've had to be protected since birth. In fact, I noticed it protected me just the other day from witchcraft. Just the other day. Sai Sai moves me left, he moves me right, he moves me this way, he moves me that way. He takes me and I'm going to, I say, well, this is what I'm going to do today and then something else happens, I'm over here. And then, you know, so, so it just doesn't connect, it doesn't connect, it doesn't connect. Every one of these incidences is a miracle. Every one of them is supernatural. Every one of them is quantifiable. Every one of them, every single one of them is, is impossible for man to have uh, discerned it. So if I have to die, you know, then I know it's God's will that I die at that point. If I'm going to live, then I know that's God's will. So the Lord's given us another day, hallelujah. This is no game. Uh, what you're going to see is the rise of psychiatrists. Watch out in your chat rooms and your social media. They're going to be coming in a little more, a little more. trying to discredit your story, especially those of you who have stories that are quite uh, fanciful, meaning, you know, there's, there's, there's people that are listening to you and they're outside your door and your window and the strange cars are in your place or around you and, you know, they're, 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 they're abducting you and taking you somewhere and bringing you back. I know this happens because I've known people it's happened to, but they're going to call you and say, they're going to say you're mentally ill, you need help. You know, there's going to be more and more of a presence of them. And I was talking about this with uh, our, you know, my friend yesterday. The, 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 the state will not acknowledge that any, any reality like this exists. So therefore, it's already rejected it. It's, they're already bringing in the shrinks. So this is already, it's, it's a big deal. Okay, it's a big deal. To defeat it, you must fully rely on God to defeat the uh, persecution. Fully rely on God, and the Lord will move us through this. Psalm 91, Psalm 23, etc. But that's the only thing I know to do. Everything else I've tried has failed. This has worked marvelously in my life. In the lives of people I've seen, however, still exist much tragedy and much unfairness everywhere. Even if we're doing good for, for the day, we're aware of many others who are not doing well. And that's part of Christ-likeness. You... you you never really break out of your sorrow because you know that how can we really rejoice until all people can rejoice? And the answer is usually people could rejoice more if they weren't so ignorant. Well, yeah, of course. Ignorant of the truth of Jesus. Ignorant of the truth. That this is not the world they told us it was. This world is some kind of uh, commodity, commodity harvesting station. Okay, I was working on this track. 
I feel I've kind of captured this feeling as I'm kind of doing, you know, research or working on a, you know, on a, on a project. And, you know, so I was like, you know, what kind of, how does it make me feel, this, this, this thing we've talked about that's unacceptable, unfair, is a beast, the beast system, is, you know, targeted from hell, from the kingdom of Satan. Something very, very sophisticated. Um, innocent person trying to learn real fast to get through it to understand the dangers but it's happening to him what does he go through so I will give you a taste of it it's not it's it's subtle because it's meant to go underneath uh, a moving picture you know what I mean it's meant to go underneath like a like a you know, action in a movie, but it's just a, a, a score. So, so just it's just a little taste as I'm just kind of finding the, the tone. A little creepy, huh? Well, that's the feeling I got. Anyway, that's uh, that's going to be uh, in a kind of a 
Yeah, well, that piece is going to be in in this project, so then I'm going to move it into a uh, separate folder somewhere and just kind of forget about it until then. Anyway, um, yeah, I know it sounds almost like a horror, a horror, uh, you know, music. It 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 it's it's really um, a little bit otherworldly as well, you know, that would border on something almost sci-fi in a way, something other. Because there's another component to all this. I think there's a missing component here. And I think that missing component is, you know, we, we, it, 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 it goes into the occult and it, it's very multi-leveled and it's really, um, you know, what we would call the realm of the aliens or something. There's really something like that. I'm not sure what it, how exactly it works, but there's really something like that in all the, you know, I think what it is is they're, they're, they're birthing human here. And they're changing the human into something that they're using to expand their operations and their powers wherever they can. And, um, and at the same time, fashioning human into being, uh, you know, somewhat of a slave and trying to work on transferring the human consciousness to the robot or the machine so that they, uh, they no longer have to rely. And so they feel they could have more, you know, to be more unfettered. I think for them to be free would be to be free of God which is not possible for them to do. But you can see they've just, you know, this maximum evil situation that we're all caught up in, that they that they, they need to do this, and they need to target people. They need to uh, sacrifice. They need to be cannibals. They need to, they're adrenochrome. They need, they need to, uh, you, you know, um, create these, 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 you know, vast groups of people that have been wronged and 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 have no no way back to any kind of uh, restoration. They need to degrade everything there is uh, that they see in order to exact power for themselves because they're addicted to it. But at the same time, they're totally evil. There is no redemption for them, and they don't want it anyway, even if it was offered. Once you go past a certain point, you're you know you're toast, right? You're, you belong. You belong where you belong. And we have prodigal sons and daughters on the wrong side doing awful things like, like Paul was. And they just need to get the call, and they will. And God will not lose any of his own. God's will be done. Finally, folks, to the answer of all the questions and what I look for religion to do and pastors to do and Bible teachers to do and religious teachers to do and spiritual teachers to do and masters of Zen to do and this master, that master, these anointed one, these enlightened ones, all these people, all these searches were fruitless. The only thing that wasn't fruitless was the searching itself. That was um, survival. That is survival. The human need to solve it, no matter how bad it is to get up and go after it, is the, uh, the human instinct to try to make it okay. This is, uh, this is good. This is good. But, you know, not only is not everyone going to make it, not everyone is human. I know that I'm not the only one saying that. But when, when when we do say that, what do we mean? We don't know what we mean. We know it's something other. We're not sure what it is. Thank you. Right? Right? Be honest, right? We don't know what it is. We just know we're up against it, and it's up against us, and it's totally unfair because they seem to have all the cards and all the marbles and all the uh, power, and we seem to have nothing but just be sort of wandering around trying to figure out what happened. And, uh, but friends, there will be, I believe firmly in the next six, eight months, there will be, there, I just feel like there's a turnaround happening. Amen. Okay? There's a turnaround. There's some kind of, not exactly payback, but some kind of exciting changes coming up that will favor the people of God. I just, don't think we can go much further down this direction and i don't think god is i don't think god's going much further down this direction i think the cup of iniquity had to be full did it not that's 
Is it full? I mean, what, well, you want to kill everybody on earth and it's full? I mean, now, you know, is it full when there's people on earth? I, I think it's full. And uh, I think God, I, I don't think anyone really knows what's going to happen on these, uh, the cheating. And you, you don't hear, let's, let's talk terrestrial for a sec. <laughs> Why, you know, the media is completely in the, the DNC, right? It's the Democratic National Committee media. And I'm just watching what they're doing and just trying to figure out what Trump is doing. It seems to me like this caravan thing went poof. Where is it? Should have been here. You know, so it looks like they're, they're suddenly kind of running away with it. And then there's a number of these Democrats that are trying to act like they're being moderate. Or they, they, they really aren't against Trump. And they're really, they don't want people to be shushed and shooed out of restaurants and bloodied and violently dealt with. It's, it's funny. You know, I don't know if anyone has, I, I don't have an idea <laughs> Well, I mean, I know what I'd like to see, but I don't like to go make predictions unless I'm given a prediction to make. I don't like to just make predictions out of myself. I'd like to, I did have a little bit of a notion that things would go better than most people thought. I did get that kind of leaning in the spirit, a little bit of an inkling like that. And Lord knows we've been praying up a storm. We've been praying more than ever, ever before. Um, you know, and and whether it be collectively or you know bringing a prayer group together, whatever we've been we've been really at it. We've been really busy with that, and we know that brings results. So with that in mind, I would say look forward to uh, to some really wild stuff because you see behind the so-called Democrat Party and and a lot of Republicans too. I mean they're globalists. You know it's really coming down between Satan and God and good and evil and, and, you know, light and dark and all that. But uh, <laughs> I think most people are going to be disappointed because they're not going to get their, you know, the, the news media would like nothing better than Nancy Pelosi to get the gavel. And this, is, this is hilarious. I've never seen so many demonically possessed, out of control people being taken seriously when they're just, they're the ones who are mentally ill. But don't, don't take this lightly. The rise of the psychiatrist is here to discredit anybody, chat rooms about being targeted individuals and gang stock and all that. And I'll tell you, being in a place like L.A. when that happens, is, it's, like, it's, it's like pure hell. It is just unbelievable. You know, to, and, 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 you know, sometimes... Just not being a shut-in is a victory. But that's, that's the old reality. The new reality does not favor this kind of thing. And nobody's going to blame you if you're a child of God and they've run you into a corner and you're kind of hanging out, you know, you're in the cracks sort of looking out, trying to see when it's safe to go. There's nothing wrong with, you know, that's the reality. And, you know, there are many, 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 many people in that situation. And, and we're here to keep on with a good fight, uh, uh, you know, against this. And, and people say, well, they keep petitioning the government. It's bigger than the government, folks. It's the aliens. It's bigger than the aliens, too. It's just, it's just you, know, you know, the mistake is when we blame God. Now, I had every reason to blame God after my daughter's death. I mean, come on. If that didn't do it. But, but I didn't. Even on day one, I, I just knew that I didn't want to have nothing. I needed the Lord. I knew the Lord. The Lord made that okay in the sense that, yes, it was a mistake and a tragedy, but we're going to go on with the Lord because the Lord's the only strength there is. And as I saw the Lord had blessed me in that way, I went on. Did it make it easier? No. Is there less tears? No. Less pain? No. But each day that we go on, raising up the name of the Lord is the fruit the Lord is seeking especially because the circumstances are what they are and because they are what they are that becomes the fruit sorry it's it, I, I know I, there's no way I, I would never sign up for this but you know to, 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 to be like under the microscope after your daughter dies. I mean, it's like, you know, after, after this horrible tragedy and, 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 you know, but it's the only way I could go on. 
And I proved the power of the Lord to many people in, in the way the Lord ministered to me and, and took me under his wing at that time. Everyone saw it. There's just no mistake in it. It was public. There was just no way to get around and say, oh, the Lord doesn't exist, or the Lord doesn't care. So in my dissatisfaction with religion, because they always kick me out, you know. Oh, not just the, the Christian. No, I mean, the, the, the city yoga people, the... Uh, uh, Nietzsche and Shoshu people. I mean, just a uh, lot of, you know, just, I just guess I'm that kind of personality that just is, I just have to be, I have to tell people ahead of time, I'm just not that cooperative. You know what I mean? I'm not, not going to just buy your mind control. I'm just not going to, you know, agree for the sake of agreeing so we can be friends. I just, something goes off in me. You know what I mean? And then, then there's, can be some bad blood, but it's only bad blood if people come in the spirit of control rather than just as friend. So many people have tried to be controllers. And it's like, and you look, you, I want to look at these people right now and say, look, is that really helping you in your life to go around controlling other people? And the more you put under your control, the better you feel about yourself. And what is wrong with you? The more you control other people, the more you ruin their lives, the more your life is completely, totally ruined. So why do it? See, they don't think that far ahead. They just think, oh, I'm getting power off of this. You know, and that's as far as they go. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed that little musical piece. I just was... Uh, you know, it's not it's not there to grab your attention. It's there to be used in a uh, in a in a you know with a picture. But uh, you know, last night it was so funny. I was on my iPad watching. It was away from me long enough, far enough, so it didn't get the uh, EMF. Yeah, but watching uh, Orson Welles' Touch of Evil. That's a bizarre movie, man. That is a strange movie. With with you know but, but I mean, you know it's a, but it's a gem because it's so weird you know it's so weird and and it has like Charlton Heston playing like like, like he's they've got him all made up to be a brown man you know to be a to be a Mexican and uh, you know so his skin is all tan brown it's like and it's almost like blackface or something it is just it's so weird it's, I'm like you know I was. It, you know, and, and me calling it weird, it's got to be pretty weird. Yeah, touch. No, I don't really recommend it. Just it, looking back through our history, and you can see, you know, you can see from this, there's, there's a, it was, what's it about? It's about, you know, framing someone for murder that didn't do it and stuff like that. Corrupt cops, uh, you know, the usual stuff, and film noir kind of thing. And, and, and just a bizarre story, uh, very unique, you know. Um, But certainly not daunting. Nothing I've seen is actually daunting. And then I realized something, you know, about music, arts, writing, and all that. I realized there's so many... I've seen so many, like, scripts and different things people have written. And what I realized that in all of them, and most earnest people, they're all about the same terms of talent and you know nothing is really above the other one it's just that that different stories get picked for different you know reasons and a lot of it's an inside club but so you know if but in terms of independent films i'm seeing just you know and composing and in you know just in all of it it's 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 there is not a rhyme or reason like you know a thing like well once you get to this le- you know there is no level here Everyone can equally make a contribution. The thing is, is that there just isn't the need for it. There just seems to be a lot of creative people who are all very, very good, but they're just not going to, nothing's going to happen because it's not because they don't deserve it. It's just because it's just, you know, supply and demand. It's just, it's, 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 um, there just isn't a there there. That's why there's so many rejections and people that write novels, you know, they get rejected and they, you think, oh, this is terrible. You pick up their manuscript and you start reading it and you go, wow, this is really great. 
It's good. You know, I got reeled right in. I can't wait to find out what happens next. And, um, you know, that, that's all that the people on the bookshelves are. They're the same thing. It's just as good as those, but it's just the way it is. And same thing with inventors. You say, well, that's a great invention. Terrific. They shouldn't have that sold. Or, or, or you know, drugs that cure cancer. I mean, oh, that's a wonderful drug. Wouldn't, why didn't they? Uh, oh, that's a wonderful idea. Why didn't that? That's a wonderful thing. Why didn't that's a wonderful fashion? Why didn't? Very as good as anybody else. Why didn't that? It's all part and parcel. This of the the makeup of this world. It shouldn't be that way. And I think of how many talented people I'm, I've known doing so many talented things, and almost punished as a result of it. Like, how dare you? So in the the way of thinking that leads to peace would be do it anyway stick it up their ass to hell with them paper their office with it you know and laugh no bitterness this is it i'm i'm just here to have fun you know give me your best shot what more do you have I see you don't have any more bullets in that barrel. So what do you got now? Nothing. Now it's your turn. How are you going to hold your head up? How are you going to live? How are you going to take a breath? How are you going to walk forward? How are you going to, uh, you know, uh, survive? You've beaten everybody else up. You've beaten them down. You sucked all the power off of them. And now you're all out of bullets. So what are you going to do? That's right. You're either going to repent and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior for real this time. Or are you going down and hard and finale and point, mic drop? Yeah, maybe they'll play I did it my way at your funeral uh, as if that explains it. <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll see you guys next time god bless you each and every one uh yeah um i i have to keep my energy up i'm today is an important day for me so i gotta get on with things here but uh just remember the whole world Every person is watched and tracked. From God all the way down to wherever these, the fallen angels, the different technologies, it's, it's just, it's, it is a little bit like being in an ant farm, you know? And so rejoice because there's, there's an end to it and, and there will be justice. Right now there needs to be more faith more forgiveness, less questioning God, more acceptance, but more understanding that, that uh, the Calvary is coming. See you next time.